So recently on eBay, I got eight of these Kioxia 256 gigabyte BG4 NVMe SSDs for 20 bucks for the whole lot, which is really cheap. And I was just kind of, what am I gonna get? Turns out they basically all work and more details on how exactly I tested it and what I'm gonna do with them in the future, including um, endurance testing potentially and just some other fun experiments. But let's first go over what my original goal with it was. So I recently have a camera that uses these CF Express cards. These are a little bit bigger than SD cards and unlike SD cards, these are actually PCI Express inside. So this is a Gen 3 X2 link inside this card and it uses NVMe to talk to the camera. And with new cameras pushing out pretty darn high data rates, compared to older ones, SD cards can't really keep up. So you want something faster like these guys. And depending on the exact drive you're using, some of these are rated for about one and a half gigabytes per second max speeds. And with some cameras recording in 8K RAW or similar formats, they're able to do 400 megabytes per second or similar sustained speeds for potentially hours on end on these cameras. So you need quite a good quality of flash. The problem is these drives due to their requirements, relative rarity and other factors are very expensive. So if I go online and get like a SanDisk drive, a 256 gig one is about 300 bucks and they all seem to be going for a little bit over a buck a gig for a reasonably high quality one with some of the cheaper no name ones being about maybe 60 cents a gig. Which seems like a lot of money for me considering that like a normal consumer grade drive, even a fairly high quality one like a Samsung Pro is normally only like 20 cents a gig max. And while these drives are likely higher quality and you do see some SLC models or likely SLCs, it still surprises me that no one has made a cheap one. Luckily, someone has made a converter. So this that I'm holding here is not an actual true CF Express card, it's an adapter to let you put a 2230 SSD inside. And while it works fine in my card reader and I got about a, over a gig a second on reads and writes on it, it doesn't work in my camera for some reason. I'm not able to see any debug info. If someone can find a way to get that, that would be great. But some of my guesses include just maybe there's some weird firmware change that they do, but I've seen other people using other adapters and getting Samsung drives, or it could be something about the power states because cameras are likely much more power limited than a laptop or desktop would be. I might try this adapter again with some other drives like a WD SN530 that I've seen other people use, but I still have eight of these drives laying around. The first thing I did for fun was just throw it into my X570 desktop and throw it all into a RAID 0 for fun. And doing so, I got about 11.3 gigabytes per second sustained sequential reads and everything else is kind of meh. Um, the problem with these drives is these are what they call BGA drives. So if you look at the package, you really only see one actual chip on it compared to a lot of other NVMe drives like this guy here, where there's a controller, DRAM and NAND flash. These BGA SSDs have it all on one chip, and that means they're almost always DRAMless, so that hurts the performance of doing random writes because they don't have a cache that they can look at quickly. They have to either only be able to see a small part of that cache or have to actually go to the NAND to view the cache, which is quite bad for performance. They're also just generally low-end drives. So the sustained write speeds on these is pretty bad at about 150 megabytes per second. I believe these are TLC drives and it's not great for TLC. They also, the random writes and um, random reads especially aren't great, especially the more servery workloads like higher Q depths and using the whole drive in comparison to a smaller file. But for consumer workloads, they're perfectly fine. Using them as boot drives in a lot of laptops and desktops has no performance impact compared to a high-end drive and they're very snappy for normal use. I currently have one in my desktop behind me, works perfectly fine. It's a very snappy system. I don't have any problems using it. You can run a lot of them in RAID 0, which kind of makes sense that I have one, but due to the way that most consumer boards are laid out, getting all those PCIe lanes in the right way is just a pain. I got Windows installed on it using the AMD kind of fake Windows RAID. It works fine. Had pretty good benchmarks. It's a bit slower than my Linux software RAID at only about 6.7 gigabytes per second, but it really wasn't bad. Um, but the problem is it's comparable to a standard Gen 4 SSD these days, so I don't really see the point of using it. So now on to what my plan with these drives are. Because I have a lot of nearly identical drives, I wanna run a test that I have yet to see anyone else really do out there, which is a endurance test on basically identical drives. From looking at the smart data and everything else I can see in these drives, they seem to be essentially brand new. The smart data on all of them when I got them reports less than 100 gigs written, 
and the data that came on the drives looks like a Dell OEM image. My best guess with these drives is that they came pre-installed in a laptop or desktop from Dell, and then the IT company who got them replaced them with another model of drives and just never used or touched these drives ever. I tried booting them up on my system to test it just for fun, and it boots fine, and I get all the little Dell messages as a Dell software and just had a copy of Windows 10 on it. So it looks like, to my knowledge, these are new drives. I can't be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure these are essentially new, which is great for endurance testing. Because I've seen a lot of great endurance tests like the ones the Tech Report did, where they did a lot of writes on SSDs and saw when they failed. But the thing is, they only tested one model for each drive, as it is quite expensive and time consuming to test multiple. But it looks like I have a chance to do that. So let's look into my test methodology. The problem with drive testing is there's a lot of different ways to do it depending on if you want to try to fake a real world life test or what all you're trying to do. And my goal here is just to get a consistent write. And I'm going to work on a little script that lets me do this. And my plan is to do it in about 100 write chunks. So of those 100 writes, you do a trim first, which essentially tells the drive that it's empty. And then I'm going to do a mix of half and half for random writes and sequential writes. With the way that SSDs work, they treat random and sequential writes differently when it comes to how the endurance works. And some enterprise drives actually list a different spec for random write endurance and, ran and sequential write endurance because writing sequentially allows for much higher writes as there's just less overhead and stuff happening under the hood that causes more endurance to actually happen than the data that you've written to it in the OS. Doing half and half I think is a reasonable compromise between the worst case scenario and the best case scenario and I think is a reasonable way for me to look at it. And then between these 100 write cycles I'm going to try to do a few tests. I'm going to do a disk speed test just to see if the drive speed has degraded over time. And then I'm also going to just collect all the smart data. And then I'm going to use something like bad blocks to do just a full read to check to see if there's any read errors on the drive. I'm going to in general just keep my eye out for any potential things. And because I'm going to make a little script to do this instead of doing it by hand, it should be relatively seamless and automated. And this is probably going to take me a while, so the update video might be in a year because these drives can take quite a while to kill. Now the other thing is how much writes do I expect these drives to take? And unfortunately I can't see a spec for endurance on these drives publicly. And because these are OEM drives, there's not too many people talking about these because they're made for customers like Dell and HP to buy them and put them in those systems and you to buy a system with the drives instead of you buying them at a big box to an online retailer. But based off kind of the general assumption that TLC is a thousand write cycles, that's a reasonable bar park. Or on these drives that'd be roughly 250 terabytes. But I don't really know, these are DRAM lists so they're likely going to be worse than the potential the NAND could do but they're also relatively new or high quality ones, I'm guessing. So I'm going to just guess that probably a thousand would be a reasonable guess to start out with. Now doing some napkin math, I can get about two full writes on this drive every hour. So doing a thousand write cycles on these drives would take roughly 20 days. But seeing how the tech reports writes went way over what they expected, I wouldn't be surprised if it takes me a few months to kill each drive. And because I have relatively limited computers to do testing with, it's probably going to take me a while to kill all these drives, so don't expect the follow-up of how these drives went. But I will take a lot of data and I will try to publish that video as soon as I can. So I'm really looking forward to the results. And thanks for watching this little video of my little story of the CF Express cards and just my lot of lots of little SSDs I guess I get to do endurance testing with. Also, if you guys know any good public resources for other SSD endurance, I'd love to see it. I've looked a good amount on public testing websites like Anantech and TechReport and others. There's relatively little, likely because it takes a while and it destroys a perfectly good drive. I'm guessing lots of companies have done it, but a lot of that data seems to be private or I can't find it out there. If you know how to get that, let me know. I'd love to see more info on this stuff.